Bonanza Squad. On screen are the three different sections of this video. We'll be starting the first video section with Slayer. Um, in this section, we'll be talking about different monsters we're going to kill, uh, when to start Slayer, and other little tips and tricks. In the training section, we'll be going through different items that may be needed and which are superior to the others. And in the tips and tricks section, there will be a few facts gained by um, myself and other members of the Abbey community that have helped me with this video and uh, I will be laying them out so you guys can all see. The bird task. A lot of you might have got this bird task uh, from Turel or Vanaka and the first thing you think of is things like chickens or other low level um, NPCs that won't give much Slayer experience but you are wrong. For this task the best thing you should do is kill terror birds and these can be found um, within the gnome stronghold which will be on screen now uh, and you can use these instead of chickens and other bird and NPCs that you may think of get these birds at uh, Slayer level 1 they are 28 combat and they give 34 Slayer XP per kill which is pretty good and they're very easily meleeable meleeable and their weakness is slash so maybe you could try out the um, red topaz machete over the mall and see how that works. A question that I get asked a lot and I got asked in the last video in the comment section quite a few times is when do I start Slayer? Well you can start Slayer whenever you like but the usual rule of thumb is to start when you're about 60 strength because then you will be 32 combat unless you've done some crazy stuff that I'm not sure about and um, you can start to melee tasks with the mall which is a lot easier than trying to whack them with anything else you'll be using such as an RPG. So I will say you can start at um, 60 strength but this is not a set in sto stone rule you can start whenever you like um, but just make sure you are keeping melee based over range of mage and I'll be explaining how to figure this out later in the video. The skeleton task. You'll be getting this task quite a lot on your road to 55 slayer um, it is a pretty easy task and it's given out by Vanaka and also Turel, so you will be getting it a few times probably. Um, and just like the bird task, you can find uh, low level skeletons around level 21 to 25 in places such as Varric Sewers and Edgeville Dungeon. And these are the places that may, mainly people go and kill them. But there is another place which is a lot better XP but it requires a quest which I'll explain now. This is what I'm talking about. They are level 45 skeletons um, and they can be found in Edgeville Dungeon just past the Chaos Druids through here. And you might think, level 45 skeletons, no way am I killing these. But there is a method that you will be able to kill them. Um, and this is by getting the Salve Amulet E. So if you didn't know already, you get the Salve Amulet from the Haunted Mine Quest which also gives a lot of strength experience and also you can enchant it by doing the Tarn's Lair mini quest and this will give you a 20% accuracy bonus uh, towards undead which makes it perfect for a skeleton task like this. So they're level 45, um, you can even kill them without the, the amulet but the amulet will make it a much more efficient. They have 59 HP which means there's 59 Slayer XP and that is 10 times better than the level 20 skeletons just below. Earlier in the video I was going to tell you how you can calculate uh, what range of mage level you can get with still being melee based. So this is our, there is a sum you can do which works for every strength level. Um, hello. 94. Anyway back to the video. So for me I would take my strength level which is 94. I'd, I'd plus my attack level which is 1 which gives me 95 and then you divide that number by 1.5 which will equal 63.3 recurring so that means I can get 63 range of mage without getting any combat levels and still being melee based. Um, other examples of this is for 50 mage and range for the Slayer Staff, which is the lowest you can be because the Slayer Staff recommend, uh, requires 50 mage, is 74 strength because at one attack, so which is 
plus 1, which is 75, divided by 1.5 equals 50. And this obviously changes for 16 attack obbies, um, but you just have to do it accordingly. So whatever your strength level is, plus the attack level, divided by 1.5 is what you can be uh, mage and range without being melee, without being range and mage based and still being melee based. And just to finish off the Slayer section, I want to highlight a few things that may not be known to the new Abbey Maulers. Um, relatively recently, there has been a thing called Achievement Diaries that have been released. Um, and Abbey Pures can do one, two, three, four, five, eight, no, nine um, easy diaries of these. Um, personally, I didn't do the Karamja as that only gives 1k and the requirements are quite long just for 1k experience. But all the others are so easy to do. They're really low. Um, they're really low requirements for each of them, and each one of these gives 2.5k XP, which you can use on any uh, stat over level 30. So obviously you're going to use it on Slayer. So uh, these give a total of 20k Slayer XP just for a few hours work. I'll post the all the. Um, I'll post all the requirements in the description and you can check them out. But if you can see my stats, I don't have a really high levels that is needed for the diaries and anyone can do them. Now let's move on to the training section. So we've covered most of the Slayer and like I said in the introduction, this isn't just a normal guide uh, to say everything that everyone else has said. This is to highlight some tips and tricks that people may not know and hopefully help them in their obby success. But anyway, onto the training section. Uh, this is just a short section and I want to highlight a few things that people may or may not know. First being uh, the tyran tyrannical ring is better than the B ring for obbies when training. Uh, not so much PKM, but definitely when training because of the crush bonus. Um, and this, you have a crush bonus from tyrannical instead of the strength bonus from the B ring. And that is perfect for us obbies when training as both our attacks are crush. Uh, yeah, there you go, crush. And so is the maul from the, the maul and the slayer staff are both crush. Uh, the Fury is better than a B-neck, even with an Obby Maul, because again, you want the accuracy, um, and although the B-neck raises your max hit, um, it will hit a lot less often, and that's what you want for training. You want to be hitting all the time and getting that um, maximum XP. Uh, before 60 Strength, when you can use the Maul and Slayer Staff, the best weapon to use is the RPG, which can be given to you by Diango, uh, which can be found in Draenor just above the bank, and it is completely free, which is perfect. Uh, this gives no strength bonus whatsoever, or any bonus for that matter, but it um, speeds up your attack by a considerable amount, which is perfect for training, especially below 60 strength. But when you hit 60, you either want to use a maul with a fury or perfect for the slayer staff. This is the best weapon uh, for training in game. Other weapons that are great for PKing and training alike, but are overlooked by most people, uh, are the Blurite Sword and the Maple Blackjack. The Blurite Sword is given to you when you do the Knight Sword quest. Um, this is a good quest anyway because it gets you 29 smithing but you also get this sweet sword it gives you um, great attack bonuses and also pretty good defense bonuses with the highest um, bonus being um, plus 14 to slash and plus 9 to stab uh, so yeah this is also a great sword um, but not many people use it and a lot of people lose it before they are able to have a chance to use it but luckily I made two whilst I was doing the quest and to do this uh, you just make one drop it make another one and then pick the other one back up okay and we're gonna finish the video off with general tips and tricks uh, some of these could fall into the other two categories but uh, I decided to put them all at the end of the video these are things that you may or may not know and it will help you with um, training, PKing, and anything else about hobbies you might not know. Okay, starting this section off, if you can afford it, please get the regen brace. Um, 
Not only does it have the same stats as Myth Gloves, which uh, one defense obbies can't get, it also regens 2 HP per minute instead of 1, that would be normally. And although this doesn't sound like a big difference, it really helps when training, as you pretty much don't need any food. Next up, and following on from the alternative weapons that we covered earlier, uh, the Blessed Axe from the Animal Magnetism quest can be wielded at one attack, and um, although this is a Myth Axe that you bless within the quest, um, it can be wielded with one attack, and this is also very good. It has a plus 13 stone, st strength, bonus, stone, strength bonus, and um, you get it when doing the Animal Magnetism quest. Okay, so I get asked this a lot in my CC, so I'll be answering it here. Um, the bear head is the best defense item for one defense uh, for the head slot. Um, although I'm wearing a halo now, which is as good, but this is better for prayer, uh, people with prayer, as it has a prayer bonus over the bear head. But um, you get this head by completing Mountain Daughter, but the thing is you don't actually have to complete the quest to obtain it, you just go right to the end uh, where you kill the bear and you can just leave the quest at that. Um, this is because it gives you attack experience which obviously uh, Obby Maulers don't want. Um, if you lose it, you cannot get it back though unless you finish the quest and get the reward. Um, but with that being said, you can pick it up on death. So like a fire cape or another, any other untradeable, you can go back to where you died and pick it up unless um, it's over 30 wilderness. And just to finish this guide off, I'll be recommending a few quests for Obby Maulers. Um, these aren't necess uh, necessarily needed, but they do really help. Uh, the first one is Death to the Dorgshun. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this will allow you to use the special attack on the uh, poison dagger, which is very helpful when PKing, um, as you can stack the poison with your hits. And it is also very, very accurate. So if you're um, doing bossing or any other stuff and you really need to hit it, then this is a perfect weapon for uh, Zabi Maulers. The next quest is Horror from the Deep, uh, for the obvious reason that you get the God Book, um, which you can fill. And you can get, especially with the update, now you can get every single one. Um, it's very good for training, especially with the Slayer Staff, as it gives a high strength bonus. And the last quest um, that I'll be recommending, obviously there'll be a lot more, but these are just the three main ones I think are good, um, is One Small Favour. Now, every Obi Mola um, that wants to get higher than 60 strength should um, aim for 55 Slayer. This is because of the Slayer Staff. Um, it's the best weapon in game for us Obi Maulers for training purposes. And um, you get this. And the One Small Favour quest gives you two 10k lamps, uh, which you can use on any skill above level 30. And all Obi Maulers should be using this on Slayer. Uh, this is because it'll cut the time down by a huge amount. And you can get 20k free experience. So this adds on from the um, achievement diaries so <clears throat> with all the achievement diaries and the one small favor that's 40k free slayer xp with no other training how good is that and with all that being said i am going to be ending the video there if you've enjoyed the video and if you've learned at least one thing that you didn't know before please leave a like down below and um Please leave a comment letting me know your thoughts, if I can make anything better, uh, what you thought was good. Uh, just give a big shout out to my CC. Um, a lot of the people in here actually helped me um, make this guide. And also to my friend Chris, aka LolPureful. Uh, he gave me a few facts that I added into this video, so thanks to those guys. And um, if I can get enough likes, I will make episode 3 of the uh, Tips and Tricks guides because the first one got a lot of praise and uh, people were asking me to make another. So here it is. Thank you and see you next time.